Hello, friends. Welcome to another Whiskey Me live tasting. It seems like the last one was only two days ago. Um, and that's because if you subscribe to our whiskey, our single malt, our single malt scotch whiskey subscription, it was only two days ago. Um, but fortunately, it's the best day of the week doing these. I'm really enjoying them. I'm really enjoying your questions and your feedback. For those of you who are already arrived, if you have any questions for our wonderful guests tonight, then please do field them. Um, and likewise, we're always happy to hear your tasting notes as well and all that stuff. Um, so this month's World Whiskey, um, which is sort of our debut in a way, because the bullet one we did last month was a free one, um, which we sent out to you all. This month's World Whiskey, um, the first official one, shall we say, is Sailor's Home, The Haven. Hopefully you all have your pouches to hand and you haven't already drunk the whiskey or maybe you've had a little bit and that's fine um, because we have not one but two very special guests joining us tonight i'm going to bring them on very shortly so we have the brand owner of sailor's home key and kilty and we have master blender of sailor's home jack o'shea who is also a font of knowledge on all things irish and i've been warned by kian on himself too <laughs> so uh expect lots of good chat uh good crack even um i'm gonna bring them both on now kian and jack welcome welcome hey tristan how are you Hi, folks. good how you doing yeah. i'm good i'm good. Good, good, good good to meet you good good to have you on jack as well wonderful stuff so um i'm super excited about having well first of all having two guests it's normally just me and someone else kind of shooting the shit on this uh, live stream, but to have three of us and two very distinguished guests, I would say, is a wonderful thing. Um, and I'm interested to obviously talk about Sailor's Home, about the brand, it's quite new um, and exciting, um, to talk about the other two whiskies, which we didn't send out this month, and um, also to talk quite generally about the Irish whiskey category too, um, because for our long-term Whiskey Me subscribers, the Irish whiskey category might be quite a new thing. Um, but Kieran, first of all, maybe I'll hand over to you to introduce the brand and talk to us a little bit about Sailor's Home, if that's all right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, delighted to Tristan. Um, you know, it's the first time I've ever been called a distinguished guest, so uh, thank you for that. That's pretty I cool. believe you. That's the first <laughs> time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we, we started looking really seriously at Irish whiskey from around 2015 on. Um, I live in Limerick, um, and what motivated us was we wanted to bring distilling back to Limerick. Um, we Limerick is on, on a place called the Wild Atlantic Way, so like, you know, on the coast of Ireland, and, and it's just stunning, like from Donegal all the way down to, to Cork. Um, and beautiful, beautiful coastline, etc. And everyone has a great relationship with the sea. Um, and um, we wanted to to celebrate that, but to do something a bit different. So our whole thing was, we were looking at this renaissance going on in Irish whiskey, and we said, you know, in in five or six years time when we launch, how are we going to be different? So we um. We looked at uh, at who drinks Irish whiskey and why, um, uh, who drinks whiskey and why, um, and, and there's a huge chunk of people, and I'd say a lot of them are on are on this uh, this this um, this call um, who are interested in whiskey but want to explore something different, um, or really know whiskey and want to make um, a, a kind of a discerning choice. And we found that that's that's almost one in three whiskey drinkers. So we. Um, we started and we said, okay, well, how are we going to be different as a business, as a brand, and in terms of our whiskey? Um, so um, our brand is inspired by a beautiful old building in Limerick um, called the Sailor's Home. And it was built back in 1856 um, to literally be a reward for the explorer, a reward for the seafarer, the sailor coming into the port, that they'd have a place to stay, they'd be treated well and so on, and then they'd go back on the journey. Um, so if that was the inspiration um, for the brand, we then brought it to life, brought the symbols of, of the coat of arms, the setter's home to life and so on. And from start to finish, wanted the bottle to be different, the, um, the label to be different, but particularly we wanted the whiskey to be right. Um, so um, we met with Jack and uh, Jack is, Jack hates when I do this, but Jack is, is a legend in the industry. Um, he has, 
uh, you know, distilled water and whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> he has uh, distilled award-winning whiskies, has uh, commissioned distilleries, has worked with the best in the business in terms of um, blending and, and cooping and, and really knows, has forgotten more about Irish whiskey than, than I or the rest of the team will ever know, right? Um, um, but we were warned before we spoke to Jack that he is he's infamous. He's a guy who... who um, loves whiskey and loves to make great whiskey but uh but um you know wants to do it for the right reasons so we we spoke to jack about bringing new whiskies to the industry about bringing you know kind of whiskies that celebrated taste above all and that brought innovation in terms of how it was made but really that brought irish whiskies irish whiskey to people in a way that you mightn't expect from irish whiskey um, so, you know, even when we, when we first met, you know, Fabrice and Barry, who, you know, I'm um, Tristan in the UK, um, it was, also the quality, in yeah, also in France, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was the quality of the whiskey that, that, um, stopped them in their tracks. I remember Barry saying, you know, this is Irish, but in 3d and, and I think that kind of summed it up, but it was, a, it was just brilliant to work with Jack because he was the one who could take what we wanted to do and translate it into real products, you know? Um, so, you know, the journey, which we're not talking about tonight, there's no whiskey made like it that's Irish, um, where we started grain and virgin cast and then recast it into bourbon and then took the malt element and finished that in Jamaican rum. So you get this beautiful kind of coming together of flavors and nuance and so on. And the whiskey we're going to talk about now, a single pot still, um, the Haven and, the twist that Jack brought was was introducing oats into the mash bill. Um, so, um, but look, that that that's really it. That's our brand. That that's our our business. We're all about flavor. We're all about innovation, and we're about uh, I, I think bringing a bit of a surprise to people about what Irish whiskey is about. Um, so, yeah. And now I'll, I'll happily hand over to uh, to the legend that is uh, Dr. Jack Shea. Infamous. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm in a nice position that I'm retired. So, well, all throughout my working life, anyway, I never work with people I didn't like. So, usually, if somebody approaches me and I basically don't like them, I say, Well, I'm not. <laughs> so, but when Keen approached me, I was, I was amazed by the guy. Uh, he was, he was a, an, uh, an amazing business head, and he had by far the best plan. And the best, uh, I, I usually give people a little lecture when they come along and say, we want to open an Irish distillery. And I said, well, how much money have you? Oh, we have maybe two or three million. I said, forget it. You need 10 or 12, I think. Because if you're going to start a distillery, remember, you're not going to have any income for a number of years. So right. what I advise people to do is if they want to get into the industry, go and buy whiskey. Uh, um, play around with it, get the, the taste and flavors you want and uh, sell it. Okay, if, if you fail, you maybe down a few hundred thousand. But if you go and buy a size and get planning permission and, and it fails, it could be down millions. But I didn't have to give Keane this little lecture. You know, he, he was already there. He already had his business plan. He already had the segments of where he wants to be. He knew exactly what he wanted. And uh, we both agree in one big thing, and that's flavor. You know, you can talk about whiskey and talk about all the various... Um, all the various bits and pieces that go into your house made, but it's it all boils down to flavour. So from day one, uh, we work with Great Northern Distillery, which are an excellent distillery in um, in Dundalk, and there's a distiller there called Ryan Watts, a Scottish guy. He's, he's an ace, brilliant guy. So we started, that was the background, that's how we started, and then we began to put the, put the various whiskies together. And like if, if, if uh, what I love about these whiskies is like if you put your nose anywhere near the glass, you get those wonderful, sweet aromas, apple, pear, the whole shebang. You know, you don't have to go flirting around for 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 a flavour in these whiskies. It, it just hits you immediately. I so, love that you. Uh, I love that you use the, the the word farting around in the same sentence as instructing us to sniff the glass. That's a dangerous move. <laughs> Um, putting those kind of ideas into people's heads, yeah. but I like it. That's confidence in your product, right there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't realise I said that. Delete that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, probably uh, this was a good whiskey to to take uh, because uh, 
Tristan was explaining to, to me that you, you're all very familiar with the Scottish whiskies, but this is what distinguishes the Irish whisky, pot still. And uh, what is pot still made from? Pot still is mainly unmalted barley. There's a whole chunk of unmalted barley, and your standard mash bill for a uh, pot still would be about 60% unmalted barley and 40% malt. That would be your, the, the usual one that's used. And the reason we can use barley is um, we can add enzymes. Uh, the Scottish whiskey access, you can't add enzymes, you can't add anything. You know, in Scotland, it's, it's very, very strict what you can do. Ireland is a wee bit uh, laxer, I suppose, but we can add enzymes. And because we can add enzymes, we can add a whole pile of unmalted barley because the enzymes will break it down. So that, that's what, um, as I said, it's a good whiskey to, 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 to get through because, uh, uh, as I said, it's, it's, it's a unique Irish whiskey. Uh, now, the difference with this is that uh, we put a 5% oats into the mash bill because oats give a nice, mellow, sweet malt flavour to it. So if you want to take a good whiff first, and uh, let me know what you smell. I think you should smell nice spice, sweet aromas, a touch of uh, a sherry note coming through. And other thing is, it's a pretty, most uh, pastas will be the uh, the barrels will be uh, ninety five percent uh, fertile bourbon and five percent sherry. You always put a bit of sherry, and uh, so some people go. Uh, kind of too strong on the sherry and, and then you have what's called a sherry bomb, which, which can hide other flavours and sometimes uh, distillers are being accused of being bad distillers because they're, they're heavy on the sherry, but I think 5% sherry is just about right. And it gives a lovely mellow, and this is what we wanted with this whiskey as well. We want it to be balanced. Mm. So don't start shouting out tasting notes, so I'd much prefer if you taste it yourself, have a good whiff and you got to get those molecules up here to the top of your nose where the, uh, the receptors are, so I know you're I a, a couple of questions. You're, you're a big fan of, John, um, of not leading the witness and letting people uh, yeah. you know, get in the nose what they get. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They're going to start know. firing tasting notes in soon, though. I guarantee you. They'll yeah. be coming up in the comments, but not before too long. In fact, there's one up there already. But um, <laughs> we'll bring them on. I can put them on the screen shortly as they start rolling in. Um, just a couple of questions for you, Jack. Um, mm. The first one you mentioned the oats had a sort of creamy sweetness. Um, that makes sense. Uh, as you know, as someone who's eaten porridge before, I can kind of imagine that. What yeah. I'm, what what would be interesting to get your take on is what the difference in terms of flavour is between the unmalted barley and the malted, and how how that flavour profile would change if when you shift that ratio up or down. Yeah, yeah. What what the um, what unmalted barley gives you is spice. Gives you lots of, lot of of spice, and it gives you a lot of sweetness, and it gives you a great mellow mouthfeel. When, when we come to taste this, you'll see the mouthfeel. But spice and sweetness are, are, are um, what comes through quite strongly. Mm. So um, one, of the, one of the things, Tristan, that um, people who love scotch and and are very kind of familiar with with scotch, when they taste um, pot still. Um, they love it because it's so unique, but but they also talk about the fact that, like Jack said, that spice, it it's something that's all consuming. You get it in, in mouthfeel, you get it in, in the nose, you get it in the finish. Not so much the spice, but that that kind of it, it takes over, right? So um, you know, um, and and again, you mentioned the word balance. One of the things that I know Jack was really keen to get with this whiskey was a balance in the flavor, that it wasn't over done by the sherry it wasn't yeah. um you know too young it wasn't um too spicy etc um but it, it in my view is, is the mark of a really good pot still if it if you can't really concentrate on anything else when you drink it yeah. you know it kind of it, it takes over all the senses mm. yeah i think that there's just enough sherry on this one i'm a great believer in the drop of water so if you add a little drop of water to it and then smell again it'll it'll open up the whiskey and, and uh Maybe you pick up a few other notes, like something like green apples or something. And then if we take a taste. Now, I just, what I like to do first, take a small drop and squeeze around your mouth. Just make sure all the receptors are, 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 you pick up all the receptors, then take a, 
uh, thing and hold it on your tongue. And then let it slowly back. When it's on your tongue, you get all those wonderful sweet aroma flavors, um, the sherry, the Christmas cake flavors. And then as it goes back, it's a lovely lingering flavor, which is nice and sweet and it and stays with you. It, it doesn't, you know, it's not like some whiskey bind. It's gone. So it's, it's um, I'm going to start putting words in people's mouths now or, or, or um, influencing their tasting notes. But for me, it's just like a candy shop, this one. Um, you know, you're getting these sort of spicy, cinnamony kind of things, or like a patisserie, um, and you're getting, mm. um, you know, the, the sort of dried fruit kind of characteristics from the yeah. sherry. And then there's also just sweetness there that's almost like candy floss or marshmallow or something like that. Mm. Um, and so it's a real mixture of really some of the best things that you can eat. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. And I always think there's, there's, there's a touch of a, I don't know if you're familiar with bullseye sweets. Are there, are there, can people buy bullseyes anymore? <laughs> no, not so, sure about that one. If it's, you know, I'm, I'm certainly old enough to remember them, Jack. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember those rocks you got when, when you went to the seaside, those big pink rocks? Yeah. They're, they're, they're the same category. Oh, okay, and yeah, they're, yeah. And they're the same, the same sweetness and... Uh, yeah. I think that you get a lovely lingering, as you as you as you said, a lovely lingering sweetness on this. Uh, mm. Have you ever had have you ever had bullseyes? That's definitely that's that's the yeah. Yeah, for me, it's I don't know if you ever. This is just going to turn into like a chat about our favourite sweets. But um, cough candy is one of my favourite childhood sweets, which was like a mm. red sort of pill shaped thing, but bigger with a twist in it. And it was super, super sweet, but it was subtly flavoured with cinnamon and like maybe a little bit of strawberry or cherry or something like that. Yeah. That's this whiskey, basically. You know, it's yeah. uh, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> really but if you don't like those sweets, it's not this whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what everyone else is saying. And if, if everyone wants to just name their favourite childhood sweet as well, that'd be fine too. Um, so Chris is saying, he's, he got in there early, he couldn't resist. Explosion mm. of sweet flavour, finish of lingering heat and cinnamon. I mean, that's sort of what I just that's said. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, maybe he influenced me now I think about it. Damn it, Chris. Yeah. yeah. I could get the finish as well. But, uh, but yeah. I think part of the, the honey thing is the mouthfeel. You know, um, mm. it, it lingers. And I think a lot of that sweetness too is due to the fact that you have uh, so much sugar. Were coming through from doing malted barley, you know, you, you you've taken that malted barley and you've smashed up all the starch, and you have a whole pot of sugar into your into your fermentation, and then that whole sweetness comes comes right through as well. But it then, then, uh, yeah, and I, I think that the sherry then just brings out the, the right notes. It's, uh, yeah. So when you when you're talking about the sherry cast, so five percent sherry, so that would be full term sherry maturation and then full term ex bourbon maturation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the new make would be put into the sherries. A lot of people use sherry to finish, you know, mm -hmm. they use a sherry cast to finish a uh, finish a whiskey. But no, this is uh, day one into sherry casks, and uh, these, these are sherry butts. They're about uh, five hundred liters, and it's very it's very difficult to get them now because, as you can imagine, the sherry business is like that, and the whiskey is like this. So everybody's looking for good sherry casks, and they're they're hard to come by. Well, they're, they're becoming more and more sherry sherry cast whiskies are becoming. This is more on a as well, aren't they? Yeah, it is. This uh, is on a yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, PX is a little bit heavier. Yeah, PX is where you get that real raisiny. Um, that's very mm. Christmasy, hey? Um, that is, yeah, yeah, that real richness. Yeah. yeah. Um, perhaps, guys, you could just um, talk a little bit about why you see Irish whiskey going over the next few years because. I mean, for a long time, there were really only half a dozen brands available. And even then, you only really saw one or two of them um, outside of Ireland, like, often, you know, in pubs and bars and things like that. And of mm. course, it's changing so quickly now, the number of brands, the number of new distilleries and planning and that are opening up. Um, and then new brands like Sailor's Home as well. What, what do you think the future holds for Irish? And, and as an extension to that question, you know, how is Irish going to sort of establish itself on the world stage? Or re-establish itself, you might say. 
Ken, do you want to have a go or will I have a go? <laughs> yeah, you, you have a go and I'll, I'll jump in. Okay, right. Um, well, we've, we've, we've had an awful lot of catching up to do. You know, I think the Scottish uh, business world, what, what, four billion a year or something? And I think we're, we're about one. And uh, we're, there's a huge gap and there's a huge, there's a great area for growth. Uh, and uh, I think the Irish will grow, grow, will grow and will um, establish themselves. But we piggyback a lot on, on, the, on the Scotch because a lot of the new guys coming into the market are bringing out malt whiskies as well as pastel whiskies. Because from a, the sales point of view, uh, like if you go to an American state and you go in somewhere, and people will be familiar with, with Scotch malt whiskies. So if you have a malt whiskey, you know you, you you can you can sell it. But in a lot of cases where you go in, you you talk about a pot still whiskey, you have to do an educational job. And uh, I think the, the new guys on the block today are a lot of them are there malt. And as a matter of fact, there's one guy he's only going to do peated malt. And uh, I think because of that, we will just pick it back and then. Irish distillers have done a wonderful job on the pot still whiskey category. You know, Pernod Ricard have, have really done an amazing job in establishing that around the world. So this is something that uh, the new guys will be able to piggyback on when, and as I say, uh, a rising tide lifts all ships. So this is, uh, I think this is where we go. But I, I think what, what we'd have to be careful of is quality. And I think as we go forward, uh, we just have to keep an eye on and, uh, this is a, a big hobby horse of mine, quality, quality, quality. And when the Irish Whiskey Association was started up, I was a founder member, and I wanted them to institute a system, something like a, an ISO system, you know, that you would uh, put a quality system in all the distilleries. And when, when they come up with their products, I, would, I don't care if they're 10 stills and they're 20 floors high or what, but just take their final product and assess it and then help them. Okay, if there's something wrong with it, go back to them and help them say, look, this is the problem. Because what you don't want is somebody to produce some terrible stuff and bring it out to the market. And, uh, you know, and somebody will drink it and they'll say, oh, that's Irish whiskey, but I'm never again going to touch it. So yeah. that, that's that yeah. price, pricey. But I, I, I'm very optimistic and hopeful uh, and uh, the way things go. I'd love to see us uh, do what, what the Scots have done and have that integrated system. You know where they buy and sell from each other. I think that that's a that's that's a great system because that helps everybody and everybody makes a living and everybody is is uh, is, is cooperating. But uh, I, I despair. I, I, I could tell a joke if I have time, but I, 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 I'll leave it to later. Keen, no, I don't you can't start another one. It's a joke often yeah, about Paddy the Irishman, Paddy the Englishman, Paddy the Scotsman having a race. You know, and they have three poems. So each paddy is standing in front of the pole and they're, 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 there's a race to get to the top. So the paddy the Englishman is standing there and all the English guys are standing back. Oh, good on you, pass. And paddy the Scotsman is climbing the pole and they're all pushing him up. And paddy the Irishman is climbing the pole and they're all hanging on to him. <laughs> um, it's a funny thing though, uh, Tristan, like it's not that long ago, like Jack said, that there was only two working distilleries on the island of Ireland, you know, Bushmills and Middleton. And then John Teeling, um, uh, you know, kind of brought Kilbegan and Cooley back to life and so on. There's there's more than 30 now, um, either at various stages of planning or or, or nearly, um, uh, or, or actually distilling whiskey. So the, the future is bright and the future is, is about, um, not just just making whiskey, but you know, kind of um, um, making making great whiskey. And and one of the things I've been really impressed about is there is a really good culture of helping others in the industry. Like I, Irish distillers are a credit yeah. to the industry and have been very helpful yeah. with their whiskey. Yeah. But someone like Jack has um, has commissioned I don't know five distilleries. Um, yeah. And worked as a consultant across the industry helping others to kind of develop the, the the skills and so on the the other thing that i see is pot still so the whiskey we're drinking now is a, is, a, is a classic pot still but that is a category i think you know is as good a type of whiskey as any whiskey in the world um so i think there's going to be huge growth in pot still as a category um over the next kind of 10 or 15 years 
Yeah. I love this idea that the rising tide, you know, um, carries all ships and the, the idea that, you know, at, at least for the time being and long may it continue, you know, I, maybe there are some exceptions, but there's a sense of community in the sense that if everyone does their bit, then it will improve. Um, it will it, it will improve the, the whiskey for everyone. It will get the category better known, um, better appreciated, better respected. Um, yeah. And um, that's that's wonderful. Um, and it must be great to be, you know, working in that industry at this time, where you can see relatively clearly that things are on the up and more people are turning their attention to Irish whiskey and trying it again or trying it for the first time and rediscovering it and finding that there's actually really interesting things to be explored there. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we have found that, um, so particularly now that COVID is kind of letting go of us all, um, we found that up and down the UK as well as in Ireland. Um, so, you know, bars like your own, like, like Black Rock, um, but, you know, bars like, say, you know, Dock Leaf in Liverpool, um, Hatch in Manchester and so on, places that are all about flavour and innovation. Um, they've really, really bought into Sarah's Home because it is about flavour and it is about innovation and so on. Um, um, so, you, and you're right, you know, it's 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 something, it, like one of the lovely things about Irish whiskey is Irish people, Irish culture, Irish whiskey is, is accessible. Right, uh, it's it's um, it's easy to kind of approach, and uh, and I think Irish whiskey is a bit like that. Even though there's amazing flavors to pot stills, and there's amazing um, whiskies of of different types coming from the island, people aren't afraid of it, so they're very um, very open to trying it. You know, yeah, for sure. And um, I would suggest that if you, I, I can see there's good feedback on this whiskey, um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't, to be honest. But um, if you like this one, then do seek out the other two. Although I can't promise we won't actually feature them at some point in the future um, on the World Whiskey subscription, because why not? Um, but they're both different to this and different to each other, um, which I think is uh, is a good thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you have to the journey. It's an amazing whiskey. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we, we yeah. actually we, we launched... Um, the whiskey's only nine months ago, and we won our first um, Global Taste Award actually last week, which was quite cool. Um, so oh, for um, congratulations, yeah, thank you. Uh, in the um, the uh, the ISC, the International Spirits Competition, twenty twenty one, um, Journey won a gold, um, and we've got uh, Haven entered in a different competition um, for later this year, and we've got um, Horizon entered in a different competition. So um, so we'll uh, watch the space with we'll fingers crossed. But it's quite cool to get. Awards and an award that quickly. Yeah, yeah well done. Yeah. It's like it's, it's the International Spirits Challenge, which is one of the oldest competitions. It's about over twenty years old, and it's it's one of the most prestigious. Like and to, to win a gold on that was was. was yeah, congratulations, amazing. guys. That's brilliant. Um, a question here. In fact, we've had the same question twice, so we really have to ask it. Um, I think this goes back to what you were saying, Jack, about you know managing quality within the category um so how do you define quality standard for irish whiskey what well, does that mean well that's that, that's a, that's a problem in, in the whole uh whiskey industry scotland and scotland you can um, build a distillery and uh, tick all the boxes you know have, have the stills the right size uh, the, take care of the environment blah 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 and uh, you can produce horrific whiskey but and you can put you can put Scotch Irish on the bottle. There's no overall standard. The only standard is 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 the customer. You know, like a, the customer buys a whiskey, and it's like I, I have a few bottles here in front of me from various parts of the world, and they're they're absolutely horrific. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, but uh, I, won't, I won't buy them again. I bought them more to suss them out, but I should have. Uh, I should have been suspicious of one where it had a screw cap and the alcohol content was 37 percent so uh, I, I was intrigued by it so I, I did so that's the problem that there is bad stuff out there and, and, and I said the, the only quality standard we have in the whiskey business are the customers the, you good folks out there who pay you good money for whiskey and uh, I, 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 and I think you deserve good quality 
the one thing I was going to say, Tristan, is um, we, you know, there there is the technical file um, around how whiskey is made in Ireland, and it's you know it's it's not dissimilar to the technical file in in Scotland. Uh, Jack was one of the the kind of founding members of the society that put together the technical file. But the point is that, like as Jack said, you can you can put anything in a bottle. You know, the, the cool thing about nowadays, though, is with social media, news travels fast. Um, and our whole our whole slogan is, when you find it, you know. And the yeah. whole approach yeah. we've had from, from day one is, let's put as much great whiskey into the bottle as we can for the price point and build our yeah. reputation for taste. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, yeah. whiskey is for, for drinking and enjoying and bringing people together and so on. And, that's that's how certainly our approach. Um, the quality standard is yeah. for people. And we had uh, uh, we have access to some very good whiskies, but we also have access to very good techniques. You know, the um, the journey, the one that's, that's a gold medal winner. That's, a, that's an amazing whisky. I'll just give you two minutes on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, usually, a blended whisky is uh, a blend of say in in Scotland, it's a blend of malt and grain. In Ireland, it's made and grain. And the grain is, you know, you, you rely on the malt or the pot to have all the flavour. But what we did with this one, we, we took the grain and we put it into a brand new virgin oak cask, which I don't think anybody has done before. Oh, oh no, that was a poor time to lose Jack. <laughs> You're going to have to take <laughs> over again. <laughs> yeah, no, but like you know, people have put um, grain into version casks. But what we did then was we we recast it into bourbon. Um, ah, he's back, I think. Hey, Jack. Sorry. Back. Uh, uh, you were just saying about putting uh, grain in, in virgin uh, casks. That was when we lost you. Yeah, sorry. We put the grain into virgin casks, and grain is laid on about seventy percent. Malt and pot are laid on sixty-three point five. So you have a strong alcohol in a virgin cask. And it's going to whip out an awful lot of notes. It's going to whip out vanilla. It's going to whip out sweet notes. It's going to whip out a bit of wood. The only thing you have to be very careful, you don't want it to get too woody. So coming up to four years, we taste it bang, just right. So that's what we did with the um, with the grain element. Then for the um, malt element on this, we finished it in uh, Jamaican rum. And Jamaican rums are a very funky, heavy rum. They're mainly pot still. In rum and whiskey, you butch the same thing. You've you've pots and columns, and uh, as I said, we put into a uh, it was a relatively young whiskey into a uh, into a virgin rum cast and then bang the two together, and it, it's an amazing, an amazing tip. In 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 lots of ways, it, it's the beauty of of working with Jack because um, even when you think about the the grain, Jack, um, it was after eighteen months. You said, right now is the time. To take it out of the virgin and put it into bourbon, so it doesn't get those woody notes. Um, we were we were thinking, testing it. Yeah, we were, we were actually thinking about launching a single grain, and uh, you said no. Let's let's make it a blend, but you brought it to a whole different level then with the Jamaican rum. Um, and similarly, you know, I remember the conversation we we're having with with Brian in, in Great Northern about adding um, oats to the mash bill, and uh, and. You know, he thought you were slightly crazy, um, but you know, it, it was the fact that you had seen it through and you you knew what it would do to the mouthfeel and to the taste. You know, um, um, we have another whiskey we're working on now, which is a sister to Horizon. So Horizon is the ten year old that we finish in Barbados rum, and we 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 chose um, Barbados rum because it is uh, it's a column distilled rum, so you get a very balanced flavor profile across um, across the, uh, the the finished product. The second one is is um, we're finishing in Martinique rum um, because you get a whole different uh, taste profile. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a it's a good time to be looking at Irish, you know, um, and there's great yeah. freedom to it. You know, I'm looking forward yeah. to trying that one. I'm a, I'm a big fan of rum agricole, so uh, yeah, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 it'll be good. We're, we're still still work in progress. But um, I, I've spent so much time in Great Northern that uh, they said I should have an office there. And they picked me space, so I said, look, uh, I'll, I'll take that one if you wish. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, I was just thinking about, you're saying about the grain in, going into virgin casks. I mean, probably what you're making at that point is not a million miles from a bourbon, right? Um, you know, you yeah. Bang on. You, 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 you're trying to get those heavy sweet vanilla notes that you have from a bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And then going into ex bourbon casks from that, it starts to sort of yeah. screw your head up a little bit. You're like, right. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, I like it. It's so much fun that can be had with this sort of blending process and moving things around. And as you say, you've got the columns distillate and you've got the pot, which you can yeah. tinker with the mash as well. And there really are so many permutations and so many options for creativity. Oh, yeah. And that yeah. now with all these different rum casks and things as well and sherry casks. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing. And uh, lucky enough, we're, we've got some very good supply of casks, sherry casks, and, and uh, very bang on uh, the, the bourbon casks we use are second and on there. They're just, they're just discords in American. Uh, putting in containers and ship straight across. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's uh, but the cask is so important. But it's it's a, it's such a, 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 a complicated business. You know, you've got to get everything right. You got to get the, the grain right. You got to get the yeast right. You got to get fermentation right. You got distillation right, and then you got to get the, the maturation right, and then then you got to blend them off and play around with it. So it's it's uh, it's an uh, it's an amazing art. I, I, I started working in this business and back in nineteen seventy nine and I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well um if you can't do it then I don't know who can. Um because uh, with with that sort of uh, time spent doing it you must have tasted a few whiskies in your time, that's for sure. I did. Um, oh. Right, one final question um, from our audience just popped up how many whiskies did you reject before you settled on the haven um and i suppose this this question is applicable to all three really and how long did the process take good question i think keen can answer that because he, he had to he had to be dragged up from limerick on many occasions <laughs> yeah I, I had um, i had more hair than you twisted when we started no i'm joking uh no <laughs> No, but it, it's a funny thing, right? Um, Journey, which is really innovative, um, was actually one of the easier ones to make because it was literally just following Jack's lead. And yeah. and Horizon, which is the one that's, that's finished in Barbados Rum, again was it's not that it was easy, but it was it was listening and then and then doing. But this whiskey, the Haven, I, I'm I'm not exaggerating when I, I say we must have gone through close to a hundred different. Um, different taste profiles and different samples just to to arrive at um, at the final one um, because yeah, you know we 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 presented actually I don't know if you remember this Jack we presented to to Celtic Whiskey Shop in Dublin which is um, lovely a really really amazing um, uh, whiskey shop and has every Irish whiskey right and and the compliment that I took from that session was when one of the guys said look you've you've created a classic in pot stills first time around and and i think you you know and i, and I don't want to say that it's credit to jack you know it was it was completely about working through all the variables until we got the taste profile that was just just right you know yeah yeah, yeah I, I think it, it is difficult working with pot still all right that there uh, pot still is, is a kind of a particular type of spicy flavor and uh, you just have to get it right so we just lined up the samples and kept plowing through them so uh, eventually we, we all agreed and this wasn't uh, just me it was keen and brian and there was some other people in the lab as well it was a team effort you know and then once everybody was was happy enough uh, we went with it so you're, you're right but it wasn't the pot still rejecting itself jack <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't get to taste the other 99, um, or however many there were, but I think um, you've settled on a good one here. And um, it's generally, I've actually recommended it to a friend the other day who he buys his dad a bottle of whiskey every Father's Day, Christmas, and birthday. So three times a year, he messages me, What shall I buy? And it's always scotch. 
and he wants he always wants to spend around about 50 quid a bottle which this is slightly less than 50 quid by the way um and i recommended him um the haven i actually did uh, no word of a lie i said try try him with some irish he might like this and actually i think this 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 particular one is probably a great one for a scotch whiskey drinker um to transition into probably mostly because of the familiarity of the sherry cask in it um but obviously being a pot still whiskey as well it's that little bit heavier and richer too anyway apparently he drank half the bottle um no wait a second no wait he was drinking it beforehand because i'd already loaned my friend a bottle i was like get that and he'd enjoyed it and so then he's bought the bottle for father's day yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's, well, a fine, it's a fine whiskey. It is indeed. Cool. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Um, okay. Promised 25 to 30 minutes, and we've done 41, which uh, is good going. Um, and uh, yeah. I reckon we could have gone a lot longer if we wanted to. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that is that is enough for sure. Um, I really appreciate you sharing the stories about the brand with our with our um subscribers our members and um jack for sharing your 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 knowledge as well around uh around the whiskey okay. category and around the blending process of sailors home it's, it's super interesting stuff from our side thanks a million as well thanks, um, thanks it's been a pleasure it's, it's, uh, yeah, no worries. and if anyone does want to buy a bottle it's for sale on the whiskey me website and if you use the code that is just coming on the bottom now uh, Whiskey Me Club 10, you do get 10% off. And that actually goes for every bottle on the website, not just the Haven. So go in there now and do a smash and grab, I reckon. Or don't smash anything. Just grab and pay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Thanks yeah. very much. Yeah. Good to see you. Bye-bye.